Hi, my name is Colonel Dave Trotter. I'm the Vice Commander of the 502nd Air Base Wing. We'd like to introduce a campaign on resiliency today, and that campaign is the things that we carry. And what does that mean, actually? The things that we carry are, are those things, that, the experiences in life that have taught us different lessons along the way. You can't experience experience for other people, but what you can do is share experiences that will accelerate learning. And for me, that's what resilience is about and how we together as a team move forward. There's an old saying in the Army that says, hard times don't last, but hard people do. And in this series, we're going to try to talk about that. And in one particular situation was my older brother who committed suicide. What I was troubled with the most was the fact that he had three young sons that all of a sudden lost their father with no explanation. I became instantly angry at him. I, I was upset that he would do something to me that seemed um, selfish. I found myself really struggling with the idea of, of you know, carrying the, the, the experience that my older brother had committed suicide. I was becoming more and more angry as well. And as I became angry, um, I was beginning to have people tell me that they thought I was tense, that I thought I was a little aggressive, and, and that it, in some cases they thought I'm out of line um, with how I'm treating people. And, and that stress was just building and building and building. And it got to the point where one of my peers, a fellow company commander, said, hey, Trotter, I think, I think you need a, to deal with your anger. And I had no idea what he was really talking about. A couple weeks went past and he came back to me and said, Trotter, you really need to, to do something. Your, your anger is involved with everything that you're doing now as a commander, and you owe it to your soldiers to do, to do a better job. Uh, that's when I thought, I, I do need to do something. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. Um, and I remember talking to my chaplain at the time and asking the question, you know, do you see a difference in me? Do you think I should do something? And the chaplain saying, yes, you, you probably do need to see somebody. Um, we can talk about the loss, but I think right away you need to talk about your anger. And for me, that's when it changed. I realized that I needed some help. And in doing so, uh, the chaplain directed me to our Army Community Services. And there I found that I could, I could learn how to handle that type of anger. Uh, and it's helped me ever since. What I found was that some of the things that I had learned, the tools that I had learned uh, in that course, I could apply to my nephews. They were upset that their father would would do that. They were upset that they didn't understand what happened. They were upset because their life had changed completely. And trying to help them kind of sort all of those things out, um, I found myself teaching them about anger management skills, teaching them about, hey, this too shall pass, and teaching them that we've got to be resilient and press through. We've got to fight through to the other side, whatever that may be. It was one of the best decisions that I've ever made. In the Army, I mean, you know, when you talk about death and, and the loss, you, you know that somebody probably won't return. You're gonna do everything you can in training. You're gonna do everything you can to prepare everyone because your number one goal is to bring everyone home. But it is really hard to be prepared once you have a loss. I remember in combat working with uh, Master Sergeant Anthony Davis, who was a good friend of mine uh, in Baj, Iraq. Uh, on the 25th of November 2008, he was killed during a humanitarian mission where he was giving food to, to local civilians. I wasn't ready for that. I had just talked to him the night before and we had just had dinner uh, at his combat outpost. And we were talking about his retirement, we were talking about his family, and the next day I found out he was dead. I couldn't understand, you know, why someone would be killed trying to do something good for other people. And I remember uh, that time and talking with our combat stress team to kind of sort out what was 
what was going through my mind at the time, which was a lot of anger, a lot of sorrow for his family, and a variety of other feelings. Six years later to the exact date, uh, I had the Sergeant Major Wardell Turner was killed. So he was out trying to help people in Afghanistan, and he was killed by a roadside bomb. Working through the fact that two really, really important people in my life, friends, uh, were killed literally on the same day um, with just uh, a few years separating uh, the two. It's really, really kind of hard to um, sort out that kind of thing by yourself. Falls around Thanksgiving, everyone is bringing their families together, and I'm thinking about two men that won't be at the Thanksgiving dinner table each year. And, and it's not something that you talk about with your family because, you know, you don't want to spoil it. Uh, you don't want to spoil their, their happiness. But what I've found is, is that sharing that with, with um, other friends that were, were there or, or people in the unit has been extremely helpful. I think all of those experiences have, have been very helpful in defining who I am today. As I mentioned before, your experience may mean one thing to you. Uh, it may mean something entirely different to me. We carry all those experiences with us. The question is, what do we do with it? How do we, how do we sort it out? How do we deal with it so that we can continue? It's not if, it's when things happen. We set the stage or the foundation to have resiliency as that backdrop so that as we move forward, when we experience things uh, that we didn't expect, we can, we can always reach back to that foundation. We have to allow our soldiers to seek, you know, counseling. And I myself have, have been in situations where I've required someone to sit down and, and help me navigate uh, um, life's curveballs. I think that is absolutely something uh, that is encouraged in the military today, that they should go forward and, and seek that assistance uh, wherever they need it.